this illusion is called escapist. If you watched my last video, which you should, I painted the illusion leaps and endless bounds. This concept is derived from that same mood. I was underwhelmed by the sketches, yet overwhelmed by their quantity, so nothing jumped out at me and moved me like I wanted it to. This concept was on a page and it was three different figures originally that I hadn't tweaked into loving. So I decided to tweak it as I redrew it onto the canvas. It conceptually is sort of a canonized human with a pseudo scorpion tail composed of its leg and a Venus flytrap mouth more overtly than I portrayed a Venus flytrap mouth in my previous paintings. And lastly, a poised hand on a janky arm with a hole in the palm. This really obscurely tells me about myself and it's like some people journal but I paint. I paint and I paint and I paint. It's personal. That's why I identify as an expressionist. I could never see myself excelling as a commissions artist. Not how other people do anyway. I think the person would have to be acquainted with my style to know already how it is for me. Yet my dad asked me one time to paint his motorcycle, which just shows how little he knows me as a person. And my Nana did too. She asked me to paint um, my deceased grandfather, which I at least tried with the grandfather portrait, but it was painful in the end. I never gave it to her. It was hideous. Absolutely hideous. In history, artists prospered on commission work, but I was like, mm, I could not have been one of those people. While I was painting this, I couldn't help but think of Marina Fornoy <laughs> of the Diamonds. Um, Marina has a song called Venus Flytrap, and that song really resonates with me a lot. In a similar way, um, Chloe Black has a song called Sacrifice, both of which are part of a playlist I have called A Passion That Scares, which is derived from <laughs> the series of books, it's really only two, um, The Apprenticeship of Victor Frankenstein before he created the monster. The playlist could definitely suffice as the soundtrack to this illusion. Although, back to the songs, um, Marina's so lyrics for Venus Flytrap go, Why be a wallflower when you could be a Venus Flytrap? I never quite fit into the Hollywood thing, I didn't play that game for the money or the fame, I did it my way, nothing in this world could change me. I sacrificed it all for a life to call mine, or love and security to be myself for a while. Chloe Black, it, it kind of echoes the same sort of vibe. I've been running all my life, tell me what you know about sacrifice. While you were getting high, taking long vacations, I was on my grind, fucking dedicated. And that Kill Bill montage, tongue like a katana. Even the good ones, they always say, when you gonna give up, live the right way. Like, why you gotta go and do me like that? Why you never ever call me right back? Because I was born for this. Yeah. Um, although I didn't switch to the passion that scares plays until after I listened to my smoke scene playlist, which is basically how I picture being in a blues or jazz club would feel in the 1930s or like through to the 1960s. It's a simple extravagance of the lyrics like Betty Swan, Tell It Like It Is. Um, Donny Hathaway songs, he was an amazing, and he was an amazing musician. Um, magical, really. I've been loving you too long. Either version um, of Tina Turner or Otis Redding. Um, and also, there's um, We've Gotta Hit It Off, Millie Jackson. I love that song. I think it actually could still resonate for today, although it was clearly very disco, very 70s. I think being a backup singer for her or Tina Turner would have been so much fun. And that's my all-time favorite song. Um, Ann Peebles, Do I Need You? I've been unhappy all my life. Seems like all I do is sacrifice. It's sort of an anthem for me, I think. Um, but lately, I've I've been drawn to the words in a haunting way. Um, every time I turn around. It's sung by Joss Stone. I don't know if it's a cover or not. Could it be it's just the irony that something I love so much just isn't right for me? But I make things for me rather selfishly. But that's okay, because it's for me. Something needs to be, you know? 
Do you ever wish that they'd stop making cars and tech stuff? Phones, laptops, smartwatches, especially Apple. Apple. Mm. Because I do. (laughs) We don't need more of those, especially once they did away with the headphones and introduced AirPods and removed the USB ports from laptops. That really screwed my sister over. Personally, um, there's a surplus of car dealerships. Um, It's actually a mixture in my area of new and used. If you go down one road, a five to ten minute stretch, depending on traffic, there are eight dealerships, I think. I counted one time when I was with my mom. I just think the money could be better, better used in a different lane. I got so irked. This was way back, but oof, the irk is still very much alive. When I watched a Ruby Rose interview, I think it was one she did with Lip Service um, by Angela Yee. Because Ruby, in the same sentence, is giving an area in Africa a well so that they could have clean water or something like that. She said she bought her friend a Tesla, and I was like, oh, 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 oh my god. I struggle with the sex symbol type of woman in this modern world where women like Kareen allude. I'm not sure how you say her last name, but if you know what I'm talking about, she does. Um, she makes videos about Hollywood scarlets and um, being feminine. Despite observing how much, like, that sort of template failed earlier women. And honestly, it's just, Green did a video on Hedy Lamarr, the Austrian actress, which I heard her name before in a Chloe Black song, Who Cares? Hedy Lamarr, but that movie star silhouette, brains of a star in my mind doing pirouettes. It's not my favorite line from that song. My favorite line is about being nihilism high, but that's not, that's not clean for the internet. And that kind of resonates with my motto now when I get into my head. It's like, nothing matters and everything is dumb. But back to Hetty. She was interesting because she was atypical. She learned quickly that her beauty worked against her. It, in fact, limited her. And also, this was like a very sexist time anyway. But she just didn't seem to be content with being known for looks. Rather, she preferred to be known for her talent and her mind. And she went on to become a scientist. And I'm like, oh, moral of the story, don't don't go into that industry, control your narrative. And with Ruby, based off the things she says, I put her in that same category as Amber Rose and that they aren't actually wild. It's a branding thing. Marina, again, a song, sex, sex, sex. <laughs> yes, that's that's the absurdity that needs to be expressed here. Tired image of a star acting naughtier than we really are. It's really, that was a lyric. It's the fantasy for men, and it it does more harm than good for the women who portray it, I think. And I'm just like, how could you sabotage yourself in such a way when there are so many, there's so many examples of how this has gone, (laughs) and almost none of them, none of them end in happiness. Happiness, contentment, free of remorse. Um, Another song I think of is Carmen by Lana Del Rey. And I can't, in good conscience, get behind any sort of sentiment of, like, women portraying themselves that way. Because it's just like, this this is not good for you. It's not. It's not. And it's because I care that I'm so critical. <laughs> I'm a Venus in Virgo. Like, people really assume whatever if you bring yourself a certain way. When you label yourself, when you label yourself a sex symbol, it's just like, people will run with that. And I know Amber... Amber Rose created the slut walk to kind of fight back against how people people were misconstruing, you know, the way you present yourself. And that's sort of more, it's more um, respectability politics than necessarily the fact that she used to be a stripper and that taints an image and creates an image in people's mind. Yeah, I think it's more so that it creates an image of like a preconception of how you are and what your depth is as a person, what you offer. Because if you actually go off of, like, just the idea of being a sex worker, they aren't really perceived as people. They're really just objects. If you take, like, the prime, the most famous sex symbol, I guess, would probably be Marilyn Monroe. She really has no... She she couldn't control her narrative when she was alive, and she definitely cannot control her narrative now that she's dead. Like, literally, no matter what she said or how she said it, people created, like, some strange subtext. Which, again, Marina touched on. Um, with the lyrics, millions of girls float on that one quote, living on that last hope, on that last hope. That was, she said in an interview, that was about how she saw how girls, like, flocked to Marilyn Monroe's 
legacy, specifically her quotes. And I was like, I've seen similar things and heard other people say that sort of thing. And I was like, you have to have made up who she is in your mind because you can't possibly know her. It, it really is a parasocial thing. But anyway, I only like to occasionally watch Kareem's videos because she emphasizes, she emphasizes like femininity a lot. And I've been mistaken for a boy three times in my life. Granted, I was a child slash tween, but I've never forgotten it. I'm like, I must, I must really be failing. <laughs> and I, but I mean, it's fine because I really admire and or like appreciate androgynous or like gender fluid sort of people. Besides, I'm inclined to think that's where I'd fall anyway, since I'm a flamboyant gamine. But also, from things I read, or at least at times, I've read that angels and demons don't follow the conventional sex or genders that humans do. So I think the middle is good. In the middle, you can represent the darkly divine and the heavenly divine at once, if you, if you get what I mean. Um, I don't know, there's just something very next level about bending the lines futuristic, advanced, catch up. Anyway, um, if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art, and art goes on, so I will in my next video. Thank you for watching.